Hi there. Can we talk about platypuses? So, two things. Yes, the plural of platypus is platypuses. Maybe platypus if you feel in fancy, but never platypi. That's what we call pseudo-Latin. Maybe because you are, as we say in Latin, a Dorcas Malorcus. That's not Latin. And second, yes, after subjecting you to the slimy and horny and uncute, I'm back on my bullshit with an animal ready for BuzzFeed articles and national day devoted to them and a whole lot of YouTube videos. So let's dive in. Even if you don't know what specifically a platypus is, you know of it. A weird creature from the land of Australia with the body of a beaver and the bill of a duck, like a game of Mad Libs. Or like when two characters from your favorite Japanese cartoon fuse together. In fact, when first discovered by European colonists in 1798, many thought it was a hoax. A platypus pelt was sent off to British zoologist George Shaw, where he took a pair of scissors to it because he figured someone was just playing an elaborate joke on him for their 18th century YouTube channel. But no, my friends, the platypus is real. And we're going to learn all about them. While Australia is primarily inhabited by mammals that belong to the marsupial family, the platypus is not one of them. Them and their prickly cousin, the echidna, are the only two animals left in a group of creatures called monotremes. So what are those? Monotreme is Greek for single hole. See, in most mammals, there are multiple orifices for peeing, pooping, giving birth, whatever you need. But monotremes are more similar to reptiles and birds in that they have a single hole called a cloaca. Latin for sewer, this sums up the cloaca pretty well. It's one big old hole and everything comes out or in it. And with a few exceptions, platypus are one of the few mammals to have a cloaca. But if we're going to be honest, they're a mammal infamous for doing a lot of weird things. The big one most people know about is laying eggs. A lot of my younger friends believe that in order for something to be a mammal, it needs to either have hair, be warm-blooded, or give live birth. But dolphins, naked mole rats, and the already talked about platypus all violate these norms, and they still qualify as mammals. Also, some lizards, sharks, and snakes give live birth, and they sure as shit ain't mammals. So let's get this out of the way. The one thing you need to do in order to qualify your species as a mammal is to give your babies milk. Yep, that's it. You can be a naked, cold-blooded, egg-laying monstrosity, but if you give your babies milk, you're as mammal as the next cute fluffy thing. While most mammals feed their babies milk through their nipples, platypus just gotta make it all weird and instead ooze out and sweat milk from their pores so their babies, called puggles, aww, lap it up. And in keeping with traditions of weird things platypus do, it's one of the few mammals that's venomous, not poisonous. Remember, kids, um, actually, no, if, if you're a kid, please don't watch this. Go go look up Wild Kratz or something. <clears throat> Remember, drunk adults, poison makes you sick if you bit it. Venom makes it sick if it bit you. Or in this case, stings you. Male platypuses keep their venom on their back spurs. And because the spurs are only located in the males and the venom only secretes in mating season, scientists believe that the venom is used in some sort of weird pawn far battle to the death in competition of other males, not defense against other creatures that might try to eat it. The pain is described as, it won't kill you, but you'd wish it had. Being a venomous, egg-laying mammal is something most people tend to know about platypuses, but here's another fun fact for you guys that's often overlooked. As you might guess with an animal with webbed feet, the platypus hunts underwater. But unlike other aquatic animals, when it goes underwater, it closes its eyes and plugs its nose and ears, like it's about to get in on some sweet, sweet sensory deprivation play. See, platypuses are capable of electrolocation, an ability where an animal can sense the electrical fields generated by the movements that its prey makes. This is common in sharks and insects, but once again, not mammals and using its bill, the platypus is able to detect electric currents in the water, using it to find its meals, often grubs and crustaceans. And we can end this episode on a happy note because unlike the other animals I've talked about, the platypus is actually not endangered. Its status is near threatened, which means that it could potentially go endangered, but not yet. And sanctuaries have been set up and many efforts have been taken to prevent this animal from becoming the victims of poaching, deforestation, or drowning in illegal lobster traps. Yep, Australia loves these little guys. They might be weirdos, 
but they're Australia's weirdo, damn it. That's all for today. Thanks for letting me talk about platypuses. <laughs>